So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the top five Microsoft 365 apps to supercharge your productivity in 2024. So stay tuned for all five. We're gonna go from the least useful to the most useful. So stick around to the end to find out which one that is. I'm Gavin Jones, founder and director of MeTime, where we help organizations be more efficient and productive, happening to use Microsoft 365 at work. If you're interested in finding out all of the ways you could work in a more modern way at your organization, book a call using the link in the description below. We've got new videos on Microsoft at work coming out at least every week, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time one of those comes out. So getting straight into it, starting at number five is Viva Insights. If you haven't used that already, there is a web app. If you come into your three dot menu and go to Viva Insights, if it doesn't appear, or Viva, sorry, if it doesn't appear in your list, do explore all apps and then go and find it there. Sometimes you get a search bar. There we go. Uh, depending on which way you go in, click Viva, get engaged, learning, or just Viva. When you click Viva, it's got like a whizzy thing going on, but you can go jump straight to Insights or you can go to Viva Insights via Teams if you search for it in your three dot menu, or you can pin it in the sidebar. And basically the main thing that you want to turn on is start a daily focus plan. Most people are not great at blocking out their calendar. They let other people dominate their calendars. Most people's calendars are just a reflection of meetings that other people have put into your calendar. If you can be proactive and take charge of your own calendar, that's the one main thing that will make everything else easier or irrelevant for productivity in 2024. So if you use Viva Insights, and set a daily focus plan that can block out time for you. So I've just clicked it and it says it's it's done. We'll reserve it to two hours of focus time a day. And it's starting to populate my calendar. I can see it below. And then you can change your settings. So you can say how much focus time you want each day. I like to have four hours just as a big block of time you have to get stuff done. If you're in a corporate job, that might be unachievable right now so you can put it down to two or one hours a day you can schedule when you prefer your focus time to be done so i always find i'm more productive in the mornings and just want no distractions and then you can catch up on all the little bits of stuff that have gone on in the morning in the afternoon so want the focus time in the morning and then don't schedule it earlier than so when do you want it to start and then what's cool is it, because it's integrated into teams you can then mute notifications whilst that focus time's on so when you're in that focus time, you can turn to choose to allow or mute notifications from Teams. So you're not going to get pinged from chats or app mentions or anything while you're focusing and then just catch up on everything afterwards. There is some other stuff in Viva Insights you can check out, but protecting your time is the one main thing that is, it's useful for. And you don't need to go into it once you've set it or just run in the background and block out the next couple of weeks and just keep rolling on. Number four is Power Automate and probably lists because power automate can obviously free up some time for you with automating stuff lists is a good easy introduction into making a database it's got a bit more robustness going on about it rather than using microsoft excel if you ever try to use excel and power automate in theory it should work but sometimes it lock it gets it in the past it might have changed but like i say most of the time most normal people have a bad experience and they're not going to go recheck to see if microsoft have updated it so in my experience, if you use Power Automate with Excel, sometimes it locks itself out of the same file and you end up with some conflicts, even though in theory it should work. Microsoft List is a bit more robust because it's got row level version control and not had an issue linking Power Automate with lists. If you want to find out more about how to use lists and Power Automate, I've got a couple of videos or a series of videos about helping turn list into a more like a task manager, which a lot of people think list is, but isn't, it's just a list of stuff that doesn't work a task manager. But in that, then you might get some ideas. We've also got this other video series, a bit more in depth about how to use Power Automate to customize your approvals and get approvals to show up in Teams. I'll use lists to track the progress of a process that's going on. And that steps through a real life example in three to four videos, which goes in a lot of depth if you want to build something yourself. But any automation is obviously beneficial for productivity. There's lots of simple ways you could use it. I would say though, if you've not used Power Automate before, 
most of the default like suggested automations aren't actually useful. So think of something you want to do and you can probably get Power Automate to do it. It says it's low code, no code, but it's not no logic. So you do need a bit of investment in time to actually learn how to do it if you want to do something meaningful. But rather than using Zapier or something like that, if you're in the Microsoft ecosystem, you've got Power Automate for free or you've got Power Automate as part of your license that you can go and have a play with. So number three is the new planner or just Microsoft planner as it's going to be called whilst it's not still new anymore. This is the best way that you can get other people to do work basically. So if you are not very great at assigning tasks and chasing up, planner is going to do all that for you. Don't worry about whether it's new planner or old planner. Basically the best way to use planner is just pin it into the top of a team and assign people tasks. That way and planner, the main use of planner is one, everything's visible. So anyone can see anyone else's task in the team, assuming you set your team up correctly. And once you assign it to someone with a due date, you know they're going to get chased up at least three, four times. So when the task is assigned to them, the week the task is due, it says it's upcoming. The day before it's due, the day it's due, the day after they haven't done it, and every three to five days after they haven't done it, they're going to keep getting notified that they've got a task to do until they complete it. So all of that chasing is done for you. That's going to free up time for you and increase your productivity in 2024 if you're not using Planet already much better than attaching a spreadsheet or Word document of actions, emailing it around. No one's going to look at it until the next meeting. So just get out of that, start using the task management that's in Microsoft 365. And the main one for Teams is Planner. Number two app to charge your productivity is Microsoft Copilot. Couldn't go through the whole video of top five apps for productivity without mentioning AI, obviously. Copilot is Microsoft's AI. It's inbuilt into most of their apps. And the killer feature, for me at least, most of the things that they show, it kind of works for a demo, doesn't really work in practice, in my opinion. Most things aren't that helpful, given some of the other AIs that are, that are coming on board. Obviously, that might change by the time the video comes out even, or by the time you're watching it, because AI is moving so fast with ChatGPT just releasing their latest version. If you want to know more about that, click this video here. And if you want to know more about Copilot in general, click this video here. But in general, the killer feature is Microsoft Teams integration with Teams meetings and being able to summarize what people have said, even as you're running the meeting, even if you wanted to, live or say, can you just do me a table of the pros and cons we discussed? Loads of stuff, but the general gist is it can summarize information for you or pull out things you might have forgotten. That is going to supercharge your productivity rather than taking handwritten minutes that no one's going to read and sending them out on Word. That's not useful these, these days. Just do a quick AI summary, ping it out and get your actions in planner. And so number one best app for supercharging your productivity in 2024 if you're a fan of this channel and watch this channel a lot, it's going to be Microsoft Teams. Most people still do not get the most out of Microsoft Teams. It is the one thing that if you get right, will make everything else easier or irrelevant in your work life. The few things that people usually get wrong, overusing Teams chat, having too many small teams. If you can get one or a few, at least one big, large team with lots of people in, if you're at SMB, just do one for your entire organization, split it by some channels by topic, and everyone is then available to be pulled into conversation threads, or they can opt out of seeing stuff that they want. Unlike Teams chat, where you're in the chat and you're getting pinged about stuff, you might not even want to be in there, so you mute it, then you miss things. You put files in chat, that actually goes in someone's OneDrive, rather than it being in someone's shared, and then they leave and you can't get access to it, or that you don't know which version it is because they worked on a computer, and you put it in the Teams chat, it's gone into OneDrive, or it wasn't SharePoint, you put it in the chat, it's gone into one of Ah, there's just too many stuff all, stuff all over the place. Same with too many small teams, like which version have you got in which team, you lose files. See it time and time again, in my experience as founder and director of MeTime, if you want help sorting out your teams and channels, that's mainly what we do, but predominantly come in, see our organization works together and recommend some ways they could work better. Happening to use Microsoft 365 because you're already paying for it, but where it's not the right thing to use, we'll recommend that as well, even though we can't help with that. So if you're interested in that, book a call using the link in the description below. But yeah, if you can get your teams sorted, 
everything else is easy or relevant. And every other app that we've mentioned can show up in Teams just right where you're working and you've got a nice little space that you can go to get everything done that you need to get done in your work life and collaborate with everyone else that you need to collaborate with at work. So let me know, is there any I missed that you find supercharges your productivity in 2024? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up before we leave. It really helps us in the algorithm. Really appreciate it. And if you want to support the channel even more, consider joining the channel using the join button underneath this video where you can get early responses to comments, early access to videos, and some training that used to be sold for a lot higher price can now get for a low monthly fee as well as live Q&A with me once a week when I'm available. But thanks for watching so far and we'll see you in the next one.